Hey, what's up guys? Colossalix here and today I want to tell you how to add 100 pounds to your deadlift. Well, this is what I did to add 100 pounds to my deadlift within the scope of a year. So I broke it down into five of the most important things that I think you must do if you want to increase your deadlift by a substantial amount. The first one and what I think is the most important if you're trying to improve your deadlift or any other exercise for that matter is consistency. And by that I mean never missing a workout. Okay, this is if this is something you care about, you got to put it super high on your priority list. You can't miss the gym no matter what, with very little exception. The more exposure you get to the thing you want to improve, in this case the deadlift, the more exposure you get to it, the better you're going to get at it. So this kind of falls within the realm of volume, consistent volume. The more volume you're exposed to, the better you're going to get. The more your body's going to learn, the more your muscles are going to grow. Volume is going to be key for this. My second tip to you is to have a good set rep variety okay good variation so this is a super important part when it comes to programming your workouts you need to know more than what you're doing just the day of your workout you need to know what you're doing for the rest of the week you need to know what you're doing for the rest of the month you need to know what you're doing your second month you need to have all of this planned ahead and it also makes it easier for you to not miss your workouts because they're all scheduled so i do recommend you scheduling your workouts uh, but that's not what i'm talking about right now i'm talking about set rep variety uh, an example a three by ten or 3 by 8 or 3 by 15 those are all variations okay but you need to have good variations between your sets as well so you need to have you know be able to do four sets of six five sets of five stuff like that so I'll show you what I did um, and this is this is something that I would recommend you trying out there's a lot of ton of different variations and this isn't the only right way but this is the way that I did it so I'm going to show it to you four by six five by five and seven by three and then the fourth week would be a deload week. So deload, you can do whatever you want. I'd like to do a four by five for deload. But the important thing is that you have these variations. So the higher the reps you do, the lower the weight is. The lower reps you do, the higher the weight is. This gives you different exposure to different types of intensity. This is a good way to build up strength. So to put it simply, you could say you might want to do 70% intensity in this range, 80% intensity, and 90% intensity, just to keep it simple. And it makes sense, right? If you're going to do 7x3, that's 7 sets of 3, that's a low amount of reps. So you can do your most amount of weight in this week, which is going to put you around 90% intensity. Now when you're actually programming this, it's not going to be as blunt as 70, 80, 90. That's just kind of within the realm that you want to be. And then when you're done doing your deadlifts, you should record what intensity did it feel like. On a scale of 1 to 10, what did it feel like? Were you supposed to be in the 70 rep range, but it felt like a 9? Then your weight was too high for that. If you're supposed to be doing a 7x3 at 90% intensity and it felt like a 6.5, your weight is too low. And I know this has been a very technical step. It's, it's the most technical one, so I'm spending the most time talking about this. But the last thing I want to say before I move on to the other steps is that remember that in this stage, in your programming, that's when you're doing progressive overloading. So that's when you're adding a little bit of weight every single week. And by a little bit of weight, I literally mean like 2.5s on each side of the bar, right? So you need to be able to do the same weight until this intensity gets too easy. So if this starts to feel like a 60, then you need to be going up in weight. If this 90% starts to feel like an 80%, you need to start going up in weight. That's another reason why marking your intensity can really help you. Go up in weight slowly, be patient. It's a very long process. There's a reason that this took me a year to do. Where you're kind of going all out with your weight. And I don't even have a 100% intensity program. If you want to get stronger, you got to be smart about it. You can kind of look at it like, this is your endurance workout, this is more of your basic strength workout, and this is the how much weight can you lift workout. And they're spaced out by weeks. A lot of times people get stuck in their strength levels because they just do the same workout every single week. Your body gets used to it and you never are able to add more weight to the bar. This prevents that from happening. This can prevent you from stalling, plateauing. As long as you get a deadlift week in there, at some point you will continue to progress. But just remember, the higher in weight that you get, the slower that it becomes. You're gonna make really fast progress at first, but the closer you get into heavier weights, the longer that progress is gonna take. So remember, the key point of all of this is just to be patient, trust your programming. My third tip to you, deadlift more than one time a week. I know that that's a scary idea at first. I was rattled by it too. I didn't think that my body could handle deadlifting more than once a week. Just kind of the cultural norm to have a back day or a chest day or to have your deadlift day or your squat day and your bench day. We put all of these things into one week, but only one time. So it really hinders the amount of volume that we get in one week okay so this line is your week so let's say that you deadlift once a week and let's say that you do your deadlifts on tuesday okay 
DL for deadlifts. So it's really taxing and your body is damaged, your muscles are damaged, right? And now you have to recover from this. So now you come down, let's say Wednesday is your recovery day, kind of trickles into Thursday a little bit. And that's if you're deadlifting once a week, but that leaves all the rest of this week without any kind of deadlift volume. It's just, if you're trying to improve your deadlift, this is dead space in your week. And by the time, let's say you hit Wednesday or Thursday, and your body is recovered from the deadlifts, your body is basically just killing time until it gets back Tuesday again. So this is what I propose to you. Do another deadlift workout on Thursday or Friday even. You know, give yourself two days in between. You've already recovered from the first workout. Boom, same thing happens. Your body's damaged. It recovers. You're a little bit stronger. You see, now you have two points where you got better at your deadlifts. Two points where your body was exposed to it. Two more sessions of volume, as opposed to just the one on your Tuesday workout. So in this way, you could double the amount of volume. You're exposed to it more often. Your body's gonna get faster, stronger. And in a way, you're kind of doubling your progress. You're doubling the speed that it's gonna take for you to get where you wanna be. Well, Zach, how do you deadlift more than once a week? Doesn't your body get super tired? How do you, how do you recover that fast? Well, your body will adapt. It will adapt to anything, okay? It will adapt to whatever. It doesn't always mean what you're doing is smart, but your body will adapt. It might not make the progress you want, but it'll adapt. But if you make these adaptations smart, your body will recover the way that you want it to. And the last thing I want to recommend about this step is that when you do your first workout and your second workout, switch them up a little bit. So make maybe one of them your heavy day and one of them your light day. Or if you want to give a set rep variety, maybe make your first workout, an endurance workout, and do your deadlifts three by eight. And then on this one, you can keep it heavier, and then you can maybe do your five by five. That way your body is exposed to different variations. Again, your body's getting trained for endurance, and it's being trained for strength. You're getting two sessions of volume, and you're gonna make progress faster and smarter. Tip number four, have deadlift variations. Now I've kind of made this clear at this point that variety is good. Doing the same thing every single week for months at a time is not good. So if you're trying to improve your deadlift, you wanna structure the workouts in your week around how can I improve my deadlift? So obviously you do your deadlifts, but what else can you do? Well, you can do your deadlifts with the trap bar. Now your arms aren't in front of you. Now they're beside you. That's a good variation. Now I could go on forever about variations that would potentially help your deadlift. But the thing that you want to remember is that the deadlift is pulling weight from the ground up. So you want to do other things that do that same thing. So pulling weight up from the ground, you can do machines, you can do cables, all these other things but what will have the best carryover are things that replicate or are similar to the thing you're trying to improve. So that's, you know, the principle of carryover. Cleans with a barbell or a dumbbell, do dumbbell rows, do barbell rows, anything, well, anything where you pick something up off the ground is obviously really great. And also anything that will improve your grip. Things that will improve your grip are just when you're exposed to heavy weights and your fingers have to hold them that will improve your grip too. And grip is gonna be super essential for you on the deadlift. Even if you're strong enough to lift double the weight you're lifting right now, your grip might not be there yet. Another thing to remember is that the deadlift is a hinge movement, right? So you start off like this with your body and then your hips come in, the deadlift is done, your hips are this hinge, right? This is your upper body, right? So any kind of exercise that replicates this, right? So back extensions, good mornings, stuff like that. You wanna have a good variation of things that replicate the deadlift as closely as possible, but also exposes your body to more volume with different variations more than once a week. You see how these are all kind of connected? So do some research into exercises that replicate the deadlift. And uh, while it's important to pull things up from the ground, it's also remember to have balanced pulling strength. So you should still be pulling from above and pulling towards you. You shouldn't neglect those things. You should just kind of sprinkle them in as well. And tip number five, the last tip that I think you should take with you to improve your deadlift, keep your deadlifts raw as long as possible. And by raw, I mean doing your deadlift with just your hands, okay? Not any kind of lifting straps, no chalk, nothing. Keep it raw as long as you can. And another thing as well, you wanna make sure that you don't go to the reverse grip too quickly. You gotta give yourself some time to build up some grip strength. So do the double overhand until you reach weights where you just can't, where you need to go reverse. What I typically do is I go double overhand until I get to around 300 pounds, and then I switch to my reverse grip. If you rely only on your reverse grip, you can start to create muscular imbalances in your body, which raises your risk of injury. I'm not saying don't ever use things like chalk and lifting straps, just keep it raw as long as you can. So I use things like lifting belts, lifting straps, chalk, when I start tapping into weights that are just on the edge of what I'm capable to do. So when I'm in my seven by three week, I'll for sure be using a belt. Maybe I'll be using chalk. I don't know if I'll be using lifting straps at that point yet. 
I actually don't recommend lifting straps at all unless you're really dabbing into some heavy weight that is well beyond your grip capability. So once you keep it raw as long as possible, you'll eventually find that the boundaries in which you're able to lift raw will increase and improve. And ultimately like a real deadlift is done raw. Like if you're hitting PRs with straps, you have to make sure that you add, I did this with straps at the end of it because it's not a true deadlift if you're using all these accessories. I think chalk is an exception and even a lifting belt. But man, if you can deadlift raw, it's badass, right? It's badass and it's authentic. And the more you deadlift and the stronger you get, eventually the capabilities for how long you can keep it raw will extend. All of a sudden you can keep it raw 200 pounds, 300 pounds, 400 pounds, right? The longer you keep it raw, the better your grip will increase, which will aid to the benefit of you getting stronger in deadlifts. Okay, those are my five tips. These are the things that I did to add 100 pounds to my deadlift. I went from 400 to 500 pounds in one year, and I'm not guaranteeing that you're gonna get 100 pounds in one year. These are just the things that I did that worked really well for me. And also things like muscle recovery, getting you know the right nutrition, getting enough protein, and making sure your body doesn't break down because deadlifts are very taxing, right? They, they generate a lot of fatigue. So your body needs time to rest and recover and you need to take deload weeks so your body can bounce back. Those are all really important things that I think are also essential, but these are my five top tips for you. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you liked the video, please leave a like. Please remember to subscribe if you haven't. If this video helped you, if you liked anything I said or the other videos I make, please remember to subscribe. It would really help my channel grow. Kloss next up.